What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Explain It with my co-host, Ingrid Hernandez, and myself, Caroline. <laughs> you guys didn't know who we are. So excited to have you guys in here today. Let's go. Look at all the people in here. Awesome. awesome oh, awesome. yay. Oh, oh, that background is fire. This background? It's my painted wall. I did that. I painted this wall. <laughs> Like that, hey, Canva, $3.99 for your dope backgrounds, guys. <laughs> um, cool. So let's see. Nice. Looks like we got 24 people on here. Exciting, exciting, exciting. All right, guys. I feel like I just saw you two. It's funny. It's funny show. Yeah, right? Well, um, we were talking about this. How should we get started? So why don't we, uh, you introduce yourself first, and yeah. then let's get going. Okay. So my name is Ingrid Hernandez. I am a real estate uh, agent here in Arizona. I'm a licensed agent had my license since 2013, um, but really just started stepping into the investor world um, the last two years. In fact, did you know this month I will have been a part of the sub two mentorship for two years? Ooh, so nice. um, it's incredible, like how things have changed, how most of my friend list is like my people who I talk to, my, my really good peeps that I like call on a daily basis or text on a daily basis. They're sub two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so it's been a great filtering mechanism, honestly, about like who you keep in your circle. So um, how about you? Who I'll are you? Me. Yeah. So my name is Caroline. Um, I have been in sub two a little over two years. I joined in September of 2020. I've been doing real estate since June of 2020. So COVID happened, had a small business. I was like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. My sister mentioned, um, getting into real estate and wholesaling from there. I stumbled upon sub two because I didn't really know what I was doing. So actually I'll say I was very inconsistent, but I was making money and I found that there were more options you could do when you had creative financing. It was just, mm -hmm. I was a one trick pony with wholesaling. And then when sub two came into the picture, I was able to help and solve more problems for people and then have more exit strategies for myself. So that's really cool. I am not a real, uh, real estate agent. I am just only on the investing side. So I use my little sugar mom, my real estate agent, help me out with all my legal questions. You helped me out with a contract I had the other day, which was great. Mm -hmm. um, you have more experience than me, which is awesome. But yeah, I'd say the same thing. Uh, I know we're doing our intros, but the biggest thing I can say, there's so many people on here. If you are not part of sub two, and if you're just like, you're following us from like Facebook or from a different group, I would say find a community and ask questions. We are planning on doing this live every Wednesday at four o'clock Arizona time, we do live in Arizona. So we're planning on an hour. We might go a little over if need be sometimes, but um, it's just going to be kind of like, we want to explain what we're going through, what yeah. problems we have or yeah. what we're solving in our lives. And that's how like clear it is. Like, you know, her, uh, Caroline and I were like, what should we call our pad podcast? Like what, what should be easy for people to find? And you know what? Every time we get questions, we're ultimately explaining to you what you need to do next, why you should do it. Um, I'm a learn it all. I don't like to say I'm a know it all. I'm a learn it all. So when I learn something, I really learn it to the highest capacity I can so that when I come back and explain it, that's exactly what I do is explain it. And, and as a, I believe this is said to be Einstein, but I don't really think it is. It's if you can't explain it simply, then you must not know it well enough. And so our goal with this podcast is to be able to explain things as simply as we can. Sometimes we might go deeper than others. Uh, very much taking in tradition of our, our excellent mentor, Pace, who is probably one of the best explainers out there. Like he, Best storyteller. Keeps best storyteller, keep things simple, makes things digestible, understandable. Again, if you can't explain it to a a third grader, then you don't know it well enough. Um, and so our goal with this podcast is really to get your questions. Uh, we're going to select some topics on given weeks and be able to explain things to everyone at once because um, like one of the things that I'm trying to uh, mitigate this year is the number of folks who ask me for coffee or for lunch, I get a lot of or like, too. let's have a zoom together, or hey, I really want to do business with you, or hey, how can I bring you what you're looking for? And so um, myself and Caroline, we're definitely buyers. And, and we just want to make sure that like, 
how can we do this more intelligently, more efficiently? And a podcast, a podcast just seems like a natural progression. Yeah. And then you can come back and reference other things. So the really cool thing about like mm -hmm. YouTube in general, I made a video the other day on my own channel, just how to find rental comps using Zillow. So we're going to give you a lot of tips on how to do things for free, how to collaborate. But especially when you're getting started, you know, things that I don't know. I know things that you don't know. Mm -hmm. JV was somebody joint venture partner with somebody for a moment when you're learning things and you're getting started. Um, so we're only, what, we're only six minutes into the zoom. So let's, uh, or zoom. This YouTube. <laughs> We're used to being on Zoom. Yeah, right. Well, let's um, I'm gonna just take the lead here for a moment. The first thing I would say for everybody, because I know we have a lot of new people. I have some people uh, ask some questions here in Discord. They're uh, trying to get pre-foreclosure lists from title companies. Mm -hmm. I had one that was how to dispo deals, and then another one is how do you structure creative deals and how do we create that paperwork and transaction coordination? Is that necessary for a creative deal? These are a lot of things. So let's simplify this to get started and we'll go deeper probably next week. And if we need to, we can run over. So mm -hmm. first thing first, let's go back to what you just said. The way to be successful is to be able to explain it to a third grader. Don't use big words. Mm -hmm. Don't try and be the smartest person in the room. If you, you know, you're talking over somebody and making them feel small, they're not going to want to work with you. So I have actually, I'm going to say this in the beginning of this. So guys, if you're in this YouTube, watch till the very end, we're going to have a lot of nuggets please give us feedback if there are certain topics you'd like us to cover in the future. Um, and we'll try and make sure that we reply to all of you. Now, with that being said, on every deal you work with, you want to work with a motivated seller. Mm -hmm. They have to be motivated. And when I say motivated, not just I'd like to sell my house. The question that I like to ask people is, why do they need to sell? When you work with somebody who needs to sell rather than wants to sell, it's going to help you a ton. Mm -hmm. um, so we're making sure you're dealing with people who need to sell, how to structure that um, can vary in multiple ways, but I'd say going into every deal, I like to go for cash first, get cash out of the way. And then if cash doesn't work, that's when you have a plethora of other options. Uh, use you the big say, word. You I say use plethora, a big word. I say plethora. Plethora, whatever. whatever. Plethora. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking <laughs> it's a thorough, whatever. But, uh, but anyways, you have a lot of options. So with everybody, because this is one of our first episodes, I just want to start with the basics. Make sure somebody needs to sell. They have a problem. The bigger the problem you solve, the better the payday you're going to have. And it's going to fill you up emotionally and it's going to help you take care of your family and other employees or partners that you work with. And that leads me back into thinking about the situation you had in Sedona last year mm -hmm. where you helped a woman um, who could not move a deal. And you made a really nice penny on that deal. You were able to get everybody at least, at least five figures, three yes. groups or at least five figures yes. a piece yes. um, on those deals, which mm -hmm. is really cool. Yeah. So, and we're definitely going to do, through some case studies, like what have been our personal experiences. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I think one thing that's really difficult with everyone starting their own like podcasts and their own um, mentorships or their own help this and help that, which is amazing. I, I honestly, you have to start somewhere. So I'm not, um, I'm not talking down to anybody, but the reality is, is that those who have the real experience, those real case studies, like that's the, that's the best teacher out there. Absolutely. And so if, if you lack some of those teaching opportunities, what do you do? You squat up with people who can, who can fill that void for you. Pay for their, I mean, experience is going to mm -hmm. help you a ton. You have the oh, connections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody just called the lead, didn't mm -hmm. know how to close it. What you close it in less than 15 minutes. Yeah. So, uh, so so that specific example, and uh, I, I ended up um, going on Wholesale Hotline with our great leaders out here, um, Pace Morby, Jamil Damji, and, uh, and Brent. What can I think Brent? Daniels. Daniels. Brent Daniels. I just think of his biceps, and it just interrupts my thinking. He's freaking charged. <laughs> um, and so the, the thing is, is that on in that scenario, um, uh, we actually got those – those lists of pre foreclosures for free. And, um, I had somebody who was in my DM saying, Ingrid, how can I add value to you? Super go giver. And on there, um, I reached out to him and said, Hey, I have this list. Do you want to call on it? And he was like, of course I do. And by the way, he, he definitely, um, uh, has a very strong Spanish accent. English isn't his first English language. Is not, by the way, ESL kid, neither am I. Um, but, you know, got to keep practicing. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, uh, he called that that list. He called actually from 
the bottom up instead of from the top down. And within a day or two, he got this lead, talked to her for five minutes. Then I talked to her, closed her in 30 minutes by being able to text one of my really good friends, Anthony Pappas, who's a really great land guy here in Arizona. And I was like, hey, she wants 1.3 million. Does this work? He's like, lock it up. And so I did. Um, and then uh, he was able to disposition it. And then uh, the wholesale fee, fee in its entirety was 250000 um, the guy who spoke with the gal for five minutes got 50 grand. I got a hundred grand and then uh, Anthony got a hundred grand. Now those are like that's, extreme. Yeah. That's not an everyday thing that you're going to get that on your first no, deal. No, but uh, please, if you have <laughs> failed developments, cause this is what the scenario Absolutely. was like, it was a development deal that, uh, didn't go well. And so she was not able to to continue it herself. So we needed to get a team of experts in there to finish that project, get her out of pre foreclosure and then just, you know, win, win throughout. I want to jump in and just say this because again, beginners here, the biggest thing, this is in an area where people were buying. This was a, this was in Sedona, Arizona. I mean, it's hard to get good land there. So I'm from a middle of nowhere, Indiana. I did my first deal. I made $2,300 in my first deal. Oh yeah. $2,300 sold the house for $10,000 mm -hmm. sold the house for $10,000. I think all fixed up. It was worth like 60. So know your markets when you're getting started, you're going to have smaller assignment fees and areas where they're not as popular. Um, you were in an area where it's really hard to find land. The only other thing I want to say, especially when you're new and you're getting started, it's terrifying. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember the first time I made any calls, I had to hype myself up. Like today I was making calls with everybody. We were calling agents. We played music a few times because it was getting, I was getting no call, no answers sometimes. Like you got to like break the monotony and get back after it. So just go and fail forward and mm -hmm. learn and ask mm -hmm. questions and at least just take action mm -hmm. on whatever you're doing. So it was really cool um, that Daria reached out to you, got a hold of that list and then called the bottom of the list. So guys, you're going to have success if you just make the call. And the next thing I want to lead into with saying this is you're going to make your money um, with follow-up. Follow up, follow up, follow up, not quitting, reaching out to these people and building relationships. Like I'm giving a lot of condensed, like a lot of information condensed here. Mm -hmm. First, take action, make the phone call. Even if you don't know what you're doing, if you're sincere and you like actually want to help somebody and you're looking for a problem and why they need to sell and what their motivation is, we as investors, we're usually solving problems and that's how you get paid. Find the problem. And if you don't know what to do and you get somebody who is interested, bring it to Ingrid, bring it to me, bring it to whoever you're going to part. Yeah. And now bring it to us. We're going to help you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's what I want to just bring back in. So everybody understood. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. one of the things we've learned from people who are very successful in here is like consistency. So our goal is to be consistent with this podcast and be able to answer these questions in a more, more public way. We may even have you come on, uh, on live with us so that you can ans ask, ask your question, question and we can really be a bit more thorough about it. So, the, the way that we're going to present this will look a little different once we put a little bit more into it. For example, I really want to get a whiteboard and like make sure that we can draw things out for folks. Again, if we're going to explain it, I want uh, as answer. many people as possible to be able to understand it, which means we have to we may have to visualize things. Mm -hmm. I'm a big visualizer. Right. I, I can't just listen to what you're saying <laughs> and comprehend. I, right. I got, I'm a blue collar girl. I got to get my hands dirty. <laughs> Well, uh, okay, I guess I am blue collar. I am I am from Colombia, South America. Mm -hmm. So I speak Spanish. Like I said, I'm an ESL kid. I know what it was like to live in a country with very little resources and then have to come and like prove yourself, you know, here mm -hmm. in this country. And as you can mm -hmm. tell, I'm pretty pale. So it's like, uh, it's, it's interesting, like how uh, all these dynamics that all of you kind of work through in your lives, like how that impacts your confidence and your ability to go after in real estate investing. So that, I think that that would be a really great topic to have somebody like Mindset Marlin come in and talk about like, really get your mind right. Um, so that you're, you can do um, this. You can do this. I, and again, like, for me, I like to think about the the war wounds, if you will. Like those things make you stronger. They shouldn't be your impediments. Like in spite of is one of my favorite phrases. Like in spite of being an immigrant here, in spite of having English be my second language, in spite of carrying ovaries. Let's just be real. There's a lot of men in this industry. Mm -hmm. In spite of those things, your mind is the thing that's going to help you drive uh, 
your success. Absolutely. So. And that uh, again comes back to like right over here. You can see these are Instagrams. This is Ingrid's. This is mine. I want to actually bring up your Instagram because I just messaged somebody. They wanted an LOI. I want to talk about what you have accessible on your link yeah. tree. Yeah, yeah. Um, I need to finish mine up, but we'll go to Ingrid's for now. Guys, there's a ton of tools. We've gone over a few other lives. If you go to our, ch- uh, our YouTube channels, you'll see we've actually used her entry fee calculator. I'm seeing a ton of people asking questions over here in the side chat. Ingrid, will you help me with the seller finance deal? Um, there's a ton of stuff. So we can go through that and just kind of point you guys. I think maybe we just do our introduction, how to be successful in here today, and then what tools you can use when you're getting started. Yeah, I don't for think that'd sure. be bad. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of free stuff out there. So uh, here's the thing about free stuff. The free stuff can feel overwhelming because unless you have structure and understand what free stuff you need for each component of this business, it could make you feel like you're all over the place. So understand there is a cost to free and that's time where you have to figure out what do you need for what. There's other tools like Privy who that's amazing. And I swear I'm going to, I'm going to grab an affiliate at some point. (laughs) Privy is all encompassing. It has a lot of things that are already in there for you. So what does it do? It saves you time. Well, what happens? It's at a cost. So you have to understand the economics of running a software, running, running a business, um, that sort of thing. Thank you, Adrienne. I really appreciate you saying that. So um, again, our Awesome leader pace talks about providing a lot of value. And, and so that was my goal with my link tree. Like how do I give as much value as I possibly can um, without locking it up, requiring an email, like all those things. I I may do that at some point. So I reserve the right to change my mind. (laughs) But right now, as I'm getting started, I really, really want um, value, 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 value. That's right. That's right. I'm just starting my journey. But you know, one thing I really do know about myself, is I'm a nerd. Yes, you are. So if I learn I shit, it. like I'm definitely going to regurgitate it as much as I can. Well, that's a great, great way to think a great way. That's a great way to think about it as well, because you're leasing the knowledge until you're sharing it with somebody else. You don't really own it. You don't really understand it. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Just, this is on lease, I'm so. arbitraging my education mm-hmm. to you. Mm-hmm. And so leverage it, leverage that I can teach you and you can teach me. Same thing. And if you're watching this, you guys, whatever you're, if you're taking anything away from this, talk about it at dinner tonight. Try and teach somebody else what you're learning. Mm-hmm. Tell your kids. If you if you have children and your kids can understand creative, you're you're done. You've done a great job. Well, and, and they don't even need to go that deep, right? Like we no. talk about stuff like that. Actually, that huge deal, that six-figure mm-hmm. whole selfie that we got, I I just highlighted the things I wanted my my kids to kind of carry. I said, did you know how much money we just made on this? And they're like, Oh my God. And they're like, do you know how much time it took to make that money? 30 minutes. Right. So we want them to kind of have their minds blown in that it, how can they think of money differently and, and human capital, like, like, honestly, right. I leveraged a really good relationship I had to make that money. And this is when you start expanding your kids' brains. Now my kids are in public school, I get it. Some people decide not to do their public schooling because it, it, you know, you have folks teaching your kids who um, may have limited mindsets mm-hmm. and I, I mm-hmm. can appreciate that, but I take the kids, I take the responsibility for what ultimately is the outcome of my children. Like how will I teach them different? So anyway, I don't know where that went, but I know I like that. I mean, you're going out of your way to really teach like financial literacy to your kids. And I'm not just, we're not just explaining it to all of you. It, you, you have the personal responsibility to go home and and teach your kids to, um, Dario, by the way. Oh, I'm white. So I'm not from Colombia. I know we look similar, but I'm (laughs) Irish. So, um, Dario is incredible (laughs) and he's a hard worker. This shiz isn't taught in school. It's so funny. We almost named this podcast. Uh, I didn't learn that in school, that in school, but it was just a little too long. So I love that. Uh huh. Um, cool. So should we go through a few questions and then go through the link tree? Or should we go through your link tree now? Let's go through the link tree and then we're right. going to come back to your questions. So okay. yeah, if you guys have questions, hold on to them. Yeah. I've seen a bunch. I love it. And we can rapid fire through them. And then moving forward, we will go, um, I don't know if you have Instagram logged into your computer, but we're going to um, I think out. we do right here. Oh, perfect. Oh, I have perfect. Instagram. I have Linktree. Oh, great. So we'll show everybody this. So guys, mm-hmm. just so you know, we will come back to your questions. So please get them. If you know, also guys, text people right now. You guys can copy the link to this at the top. If you think anybody will get value, we have 40 minutes left to do this um, live. Let's go through every question that you have. 
Um, we want to help you out, especially if you have like something that needs to be taken care of immediately. Like those motivated sellers, the ones that need to sell. I know all my the people that are in the daily down know the answer to this. Let me see in the side chart right now. Who needs to sell immediately? That is something that cannot wait, everybody. I know there's a little lag time here. I want to know who needs to sell that you guys might be talking to and you have a lead that's motivated everyone. Let me see in the side chart if you know the answer to this. While you do that, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go over Ingrid's um, Instagram so you guys can find all of these great um, bonuses that are available to you. Hey -o. Hey -o. Here we go. So we're going to go to Chrome tab and we're going to click on, there we go. Joel got it. Foreclosures, guys. People are getting foreclosed on. They're highly motivated. If they don't sell, they're going to lose their house. They're going to have that foreclosure on their record. They're going to ruin their credit for seven years. It's going to mess them up. So I would recommend if you're just getting started, start building those relationships with foreclosures now. Can you please let me close them too? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Bring okay. If you ever need that help. Okay. I'm going to, I'm not going to put anybody on blast, but I had a seller who um, just allowed himself to go into foreclosure and I was going to JV <clears> on this deal. It was a wrap. And I, I saw the rap question. I, I will answer that rap question. But the the uh, they they foreclosed yesterday. Um, and I'm like, man, I really wish I was the one closing the seller because, uh, you know, I know I know agents get put on blast. But imagine when you're a unicorn agent, you get so much instant credibility, especially with sellers, because we're held to a higher standard. We're held at like ethics that like mm -hmm. wholesales, wholesalers are not. Um, you could lose your license. I could lose my license. Like I could be held legally liable for certain things. Um, there's components of having your license where you're treated almost like a lawyer. Mm. So the, you, you'll hear things like fiduciary responsibility. Mm -hmm. So it's funny because I, I see it, right? I see people talking a lot of smack about agents, why they won't show their offer, why they won't do this, why they won't do that. And I was like, you're not speaking in that agent's language. And at the end of the day, it's your fault. I don't blame those agents. Come at me, at me. I don't care. I don't blame those agents because if you're asking me an agent who knows nothing about creative finance and saying, hey, I want you to present this offer to your seller. Imagine how stupid I'm going to look to that seller because don't I don't know it. how to understand. Yeah. And I'm essentially providing a fiduciary responsibility. You got to protect means your client. I am legally responsible for that exchange and that offer presentation. So if I, uh, as a wholesaler, don't make agents feel comfortable about my offer and it's completely foreign to them, mm -hmm. they're not going to want to present it. They don't understand it. So I've honestly have had a really group, like, mind you. You have not, really, I listen to your calls. You have really good calls with agents when you're explaining creative finance. And not every situation calls for a creative deal. And Hang on, wait are, a second. Wait, say that one more time <laughs> for the people in the back that weren't, guys, if you're not paying attention, listen to what yeah. you just said. Say it one more time. Not every situation calls for a creative deal. If you don't have the right motivation or the right components to a deal that call for a creative, now, mind you, there's some of us who are like, look, creative could... Work for everything. Work for everything. Yeah. 100%. I, I do think that, but that's an investor's point of view, not a, a seller's. seller's. Well, I mean, what if you own something free and clear? I don't need to sell or finance it. Yeah. I don't. I want my cash. Yeah. You I know want what? my cash and go to Costa Rica. Exactly. I'm going on a cruise. I'm buying all right. kinds of toys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a really we, good point. We would be happy to, to help you guys close on some of these. And again, I get that instant credibility because even if I'm calling Florida or Texas or anybody, I still say I'm licensed. Mm -hmm. They didn't ask me where I'm licensed, but I do say I'm licensed because it's my fiduciary. It's my, excuse me. It's my uh, ethical responsibility to say that I'm mm -hmm. licensed, even though it's in the state of Arizona. But and also like you had to pay for schooling. Mm -hmm. You have to con do continued education. It gives you that little safety net. I'm going to trust you a little bit more. Yeah. As long as I've had a good experience with the realtor. Yeah, for sure. So I saw, I, I think you must be responding to one of those comments I saw on the side chat. So guys, depends on how you explain things. A confused mind says always that. says, heck no. Mm -hmm. Okay. So don't try and talk circles. One of the things I struggle with, sometimes I talk really fast because I get excited and I get nervous and I got to slow down. So especially when you're explaining things, I have to remind myself to slow down. And this is a little tip that I, I have ADD. I have ADHD technically. I struggle with active listening. So I have multiple thoughts going through my head at once. This is a life hack as well for you guys. When I want to active listen, I, and I was doing this when I was listening to you speak. 
I repeat what you're saying in my head mm -hmm. and I retain it more. So if you guys are talking to people and you're just talking to respond or you're listening to respond and you're not actually hearing what's being said, you're not solving your seller's problem. You're not, sol if you work with agents, mm -hmm. you're not solving the agent's problem of trying to work with this seller that might be maybe, nope, I'm not selling it for less than what I think it's worth. And it's like, well, I know it shouldn't be listed at 300,000. It should be listed at 220, mm -hmm. but they won't budge. So mm -hmm. make sure you're actually listening to understand and then solve their problem from there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. So let's All go right. through the link tree. We'll come back to your questions. Um, I want to do, I do want to address one thing. Somebody said, Sellers with pain. When I was getting at sellers that are in pre foreclosure, sellers in pre foreclosure have pain. There's other people have pain, but like, yeah. make sure they're highly motivated. So, guys, if you need to get something closed soon, find those ones that they like. They need to sell in 30 days or less, or else something's going to happen. So, those are the ones that I'd say I'd focus on, especially if you're brand new. Now, let's share our screen. Let's go over here, and we will go over Instagram so you guys can see this. We're gonna go to Instagram, Ingrid Ortiz Hernandez. Did I say that right? Yeah, Ortiz was my Ortiz. maiden name, and I moved it to my middle name. Uh, I have, you know, it was with me yeah. for too long. Right. I Kane's my middle I name. I couldn't just let it go. All right, guys. So you go to her Instagram. You can see all her dope stuff. Here's our explain it. There's her amazing husband, Mark. There's all the stuff in here. We're going to go to this portion right here. It says link tree. We're going to click on that. I don't I share this tab instead, so I've just opened it up again. Here you go. I'm going to let you explain. I'm going to yeah. give you the mouse. I'm going to let you take the wheel. All right. Jesus, not me. Not okay. you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, me, me. You I'll are. Take the wheel. Right now. <laughs> um, so I am a real estate agent and I actually, this past summer, I joined Real Brokerage and that's oh. freaking awesome. I love what is them. What is Real Brokerage? So Real Brokerage is a real estate agent brokerage, but okay. one of the things that make them like unique is mm -hmm. that not only are they virtual, so you don't have all these added costs for being like in an office. Oh, okay. Um, so you can work from home from this brokerage. Yes. Okay. Well, the actual brokerage is virtual. So the oh. difference between like a brick and mortar brokerage and a virtual brokerage is that like a brick and mortar brokerage, like when I used to be with Keller Williams, for example, they had an office. It was independently owned and operated because it was franchise. Gotcha. Okay. So you had to have a receptionist. You had to have the person who payroll. fixed all this. So there was payroll. There's all these costs. And you're like, what is this royalty thing I keep paying? And it's like, oh, because it's paying for. All that the utilities, yeah. is paying for the owner because it's like a business that he's running. franchise. Right. So, so less fees and you get paid more when you work with real fees. brokerage. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, when I moved to real, I, all I had to do was sign a wholesaler's exception. Mm -hmm. And so they allow me to wholesale as long as I followed these rules that they gave me. So I'm like, Oh, well those rules that you gave me is the way that I run my business anyway. So it just worked out. It was okay. great. So anyway, that's the very first thing. So if you're considering, if you're a licensed agent, you're considering moving to a virtual investor friendly brokerage, uh, click on that link and let me know. So these are all these cool resources that I use. We're going to get to the REI calculator, but like, for example, relay financial, um, they allow you 20 banking accounts, um, per LLC, if you want to join sub two, um, I don't automatically send people to the, uh, like how to get started with sub two. Like, mm -hmm. I want to first make sure that if I'm going to refer someone, it's somebody worth doing because I'm a landlord. There's Makes another sense. link to avail where, uh, you get a whole bunch of really cool stuff and you get 50 bucks, um, uh, my YouTube channel. Cause okay. uh, so please, if you haven't uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel while you're here, <laughs> And then the free REI, uh, REI entry free calculator. And I'm sorry. And I think you were talking about an LOI, right? Yeah. Letter somebody of... asked about the LOI. So I told them to come in here. Got it. So there's the free letter of intent. Uh, let, uh, letter of intent is um, what you would give in lieu of creating a big contract. Okay. It's easier. It's like the summary component of your intentions of making an offer so okay. that you're not having to over engineer a cap, like a contract and then you send it and then there's a, um, a counter and then another counter because you guys were on the same page. This actually helps with communications much faster. Okay. I'm going to click on it and then, um, sure yeah. Yep. So when you click on it, here's what you see. Um, so can you see that? Yeah, it's just there? Got, I just got a delay. You're good. Okay. 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 Cool. So uh, this letter is basically you'd put your company name up here. The so date. let's even go one step further, guys. You'd want to download this or you can click on that open with Google Docs and have it on your own computer and use it. You want to use like DocuSign. I think HelloSign, you get one free contract a month. So there's different programs or 
if you're going to do it the old fashioned way, print copy, it off. Or you know what? You can even copy and paste this into an email format. You oh, don't even you have to have a separate attachment. You can just, you can even not have the signature components. Cause again, this is more of a communication piece with you and the agent or, or you and the seller. You don't necessarily have to go this fancy or this dramatic to go into like a signature. Mm -hmm. I like to do that because it, adds a level of professionalism to say, oh man, they're asking for signatures. This mm -hmm. is way more um, uh, binding than it actually is because it's technically not a contract. Yeah. Um, Just a letter so of intent. It's a letter of intent. This I is intend. what I'd like to do if you guys yeah. accept it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so for, for those who are doing creative or cash, I'm just going to go really quickly through these uh, components. So um, other than putting your company, the address, and then the date that you're doing it, you want to put your phone number here so it's easier to get contacted. Mm -hmm. When you're talking to an agent, however, sometimes I actually take that last sentence out because they want to control the conversation and I don't want to step on their toes. So mm -hmm. I'll have this last sentence, the if you have any questions, please call me at. I'll take that off. Um, and then purchase price. Um, obviously, when you're doing creative, you add whatever the debts are plus whatever the equity may be a combined, that would be your purchase price. Sometimes, okay. I, sometimes they put approximately after it. Okay. So you, if you had $50,000 in debt or arrears, like bad debt arrears that you have not paid to the bank and the seller is like, I will sell or finance it to you or I'll let you take it over my, the rest of my mortgage at $250,000. What would your purchase price be? If they had 50,000 in arrears mm -hmm. and then they're saying the mortgage is 250,000, mm -hmm. it's 300,000. So, so your purchase price would be yeah. 300,000. Okay. There might be some adjustments because that 50,000 might negate their actual debt. So maybe it's like a good, like a small piece of it. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so many um, variables mm -hmm. that you just can't answer that right away. So yeah. your best bet is it's just say mortgage arrears approximately. So okay. what that total amount is cool on their financing. If it's creative, uh, you would say subject to existing mortgages or subject to existing liens plus seller equity or seller carry back agents, no seller carry back more than any other term okay. from that creative standpoint. If it's cash, you would put cash or in my opinion, I actually think it's smarter to say hard money because I think sometimes people think cash is cash, but mm. cash is never cash. Yeah. So, um, earnest money deposit. Um, what do you usually do? 10%, 10% of your purchase price? No, 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 no. What do you do? I do between like a hundred and 500. There you go. Uh, the million dollar property we just recently bought, <laughs> Um, what, how'd you buy it? With cash? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that we uh, put 5000 in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then I just put to go towards down payment. Because it was a yeah, million dollar house and you're yeah. helping somebody who's in? Yeah. Pre-foreclosure. It was a pre-foreclosure. I can't wait to do that case study. I'm mm -hmm. excited about it, actually. Uh, due diligence is the same as the inspection period. Uh, generally I do around 15 days or more depending on what kind of structure we're doing. So due diligence. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And closing, um, this is technically, I should say closing date. Um, so pick the date you want to close. And okay. sometimes what I do is I say, or sooner, cause that is enticing to say, Oh, they could actually close faster, mm -hmm. but that's just like, so you could say February 14th or sooner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Closing costs, like who is going to take care of closing costs. So here I like to highlight that I'll, you know, I'll pay the for buyer. my closing costs and the seller's closing costs. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So that way you're emphasizing this as a benefit. Um, okay. Okay. And then any additional terms, like one of the things I like to put on there is let's say I have to create a balloon for this, meaning the balance of the mortgage is going to get paid sooner rather than later. Um, I'll take, I'll actually create what those look like and that I expect at least 25 to 30% appreciation on the property by the time we balloon. So that's yes. like a, a contingency is the term. Or um, I, if it's somebody in pre foreclosure and it's creative contingent on seller providing mortgage, uh, up to date mortgage statements so that we know exactly what, what that approximate own. amount actually is because why? Buyers, buyers are liars. And sellers, sellers are worse. worse. Yeah. Yeah. Even the million dollar property we bought, 
we were under the impression the mortgage was going to be closer to 925. And after paying the arrears, it was actually 955. So that's a $30,000 discrepancy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, here, uh, I think somebody actually asked in the comments about what contract do you use? So one way that you can actually scorch the earth and, and we can talk about what scorching the earth is at another time, but um, you can use what, at least in the state of Arizona, uses this the AAR contract, which is like the Arizona approved. Association of Realtors mm -hmm. approved? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's approved by the state of Arizona, which yeah. makes things a lot easier. They don't have to figure out this is legit. Yeah, yeah. It's a legit contract, something that every broker will accept. Because when you use a different contract, it adds friction. It adds more steps to their ability to get a contract approved. And even though the contracts we use are pretty, you know, pretty parallel, mm -hmm. I'll say, with AAR, um, they, they want to make sure that it's an easy, frictionless transaction. So what I say is, hey, I'll use your state approved board of realtors contract. So like even in Texas, mm -hmm. I have contacts in Texas. I can get a Texas contract in Florida. I have contacts in Florida. I'll use the Florida accepted contract. And then I'll just use the addendum to, to add to it, it. Creative, whatever way you're going subject Correct. to seller Correct. finance, mm -hmm. you know, all those things. Yeah, okay. yeah. So cool. it makes it more balanced because think about it. When you're dealing with agents, again, they have to feel comfortable with what's in front of them and can they provide that fiduciary responsibility to their sellers based on what they're send what you're sending them. And so the more comfortable you make them in a transaction, the more frictionless it will be. Okay. So, Makes yeah. sense. Right on. Um, I did see somebody just asked, where can I get this contract? So let's go one more time. One more You're going to go um, to Ingrid's Instagram, Ingrid Hernandez. You can see this actually below our uh, faces. I'm looking at another screen. So, sure. My Instagram, Ingrid's Instagram. And make sure you follow. Yeah, I click the follow button. So my goal is to get to 5,000 this year. How Ooh, about you? How absolutely. Many, how many do you want I don't to get know. To? I want to get to, uh, I think I'm right around 8,000 right now. Oh. I've been working my Instagram since high school. Get so it, girl. I know get my it. My Instagram's been going for a while. I, uh, no, I, I just barely 15. started working yeah, online since, since. You're hustling. Uh, yeah, am I? You are. Uh, so I like it. It's a compliment. So click on the link tree here. When you click on the link tree, it'll bring you to this link tree page. And then that's where you're going to get the letter of intent, LOI offer and an entry fee calculator. We've done it on another Zoom. We won't go into that too much. Um, finish up the LOIs and we'll go to Q&A because we have 20 minutes left. Yeah. Let's, okay. So let's do the last 20 minutes of just Q&A. I think Perfect. next time uh, we meet, hopefully Caroline's link tree will be up and running and yeah. you can see all the cool resources yeah. she has. So Available. Sweet. Okay. Are we going to scroll up and see what questions we have? Maybe yeah, maybe? let's do that. So let's see. We saw, okay, we have 75 people on here. So wow. I know that's pretty great. Let me see who was on there. There you go. Okay, oh, all snap, on. crackle, pop. All right. So you know what? We can go to the top, but let's just go who we know is still on the Zoom. Mm -hmm. So we'll go right here. So this one says, um, all right. How do you explain to agents when speaking about purchasing using creative strategies that the seller can still buy another home, even if I buy it sub two? Thanks in advance. Like that was a good. Right one. on, right on. All right, I'm gonna let you since you're the agent. You're the agent whisperer. Well, here's the reality. Sometimes you can't. That is true. Sometimes you cannot go buy a property if you already have one. I'll give you an example. If that seller has an FHA property right now and you want to buy it, at, what is FHA? Uh, Federal Housing Association. Assistance. Assistance, sorry, mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it's basically a government-backed loan. And it allows, I'll call them higher risk buyers to have a mortgage where under normal, conventional, traditional circumstances, they would not qualify. So okay. this is somebody generally with not as great of credit score, maybe not high uh higher income than they normally would be they have a lower down payment than like than five percent generally so these are folks who i would call are in a higher risk bucket and it's really funny because i was talking to rafael uh, escobedo he's an agent here in arizona and he's like man every sub two i'm seeing is like fha or va and i was like well duh when you think about who gets qualified for those kinds of of, uh, of mortgages, they tend to be higher risk buyers. And so if you're a higher risk buyer, somebody who may not have the financial literacy or have the right financial habits is what I would like to say. Um, 
then you could quickly put yourself in a predicament with your mortgages. So those are usually the higher statistics that you see in pre-foreclosure. So, oh, look, Rafa's hey, in the house. I, was say, I don't want to ruin your flow, but he No, I love it, coming. I love it. I love Rafa. Hey, yeah, he's, Rafa's oh my gosh. Awesome. Honestly, you know, like when you meet people and they have like a big old heart, that, that's my dude right there. Where's I he's it. a good guy. He's a very good local, guy. Local. Okay, so when you're explaining to an agent, hey, you can actually go buy another house, that's not always true. It's very situational and it also depends on how qualified your buyer is or excuse me, your seller, because then they become a buyer. So if your seller is not as well qualified, you're going to have to be very honest that they might not be able to go buy another house. Now, another thing to talk about, guys, when you're doing subject to versus seller finance, when somebody's willing to subject to their house, they don't have financial literacy, they're in a problem. So listen, I, I mean, I think I like one of the lines, like you say, I'm going to be your backup option. Mm hmm. Okay. Nine times out of 10, they're going to try and sell it on the market and not go. Uh -huh. um, Cause sometimes they don't understand or the agent can't explain it. So just be like, listen, I'm here in your 11th hour and let's just, I'm going to give it a pot potential situation here. Maybe they're in pre foreclosure. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, if you don't sell by this time and you need somebody to come in and buy it, I will come in and buy, I'll catch up the arrears and we can figure out what works. So your seller doesn't have this foreclosure on the record. Like you give them all these things. We'll get you paid as the agent. You know, we're going to make sure you get your commission. Mm -hmm. um, it might not be, you know, in this situation, I'm not going to muddy the waters and explain everything, but I'm going to help you avoid this foreclosure and messing up your credit for seven years. You might not be able to go get a house, but you could go get an apartment because your credit's not going to be ruined. Or go buy a vehicle mm -hmm. or have a credit card. Mm -hmm. So I went through a short sale situation, which oh, yeah. is basically on the precipice of pre foreclosure. Mm -hmm. And man, how much gets ruined for you financially is beyond a mortgage, beyond mortgage is just one component, although it's a big component, it's just one component. Okay, but then there are situations where you can go and help them go buy a house creatively. Yeah, you're doing that. You're I'm doing trying that. to right now. So if you guys have a really cool deal, uh, let's say 20, 2800 square feet or bigger, I need it to be four bedrooms or more in Payson or Flagstaff. I need it to be a creative deal. Um, I'm looking for that for a seller that we know cannot qualify for another uh, another mortgage, but has the verifiable income. So if you have that, come at, come at me. But there are things that you can do. So, for example, I wholesaled the property in Florida to Pace. Mm -hmm. And that seller, um, their, their pain was not pre-foreclosure. They're paying, it was a conventional loan in okay. Florida. So this is probably somebody who already has higher credit score, higher income, better qualified for mortgages. Um, they were having to move to Texas because of a job change. And so um, in that scenario, uh, we, we didn't have to explain it to the agent. We actually explained it directly to the seller. In fact, it was the first time I had to talk to a lawyer and I was not impressed. But anyway, um, I was talking to the seller. And one of the things you can do is uh, use a servicing company when you're paying their mortgage, mm -hmm. which it's basically a neutral third party okay. that helps keep track of who's paying what so that when you have to go to bat for a seller, you can explain, look, they're technically not paying this mortgage. Um, it's like a lease in the financial technical terms um, in that somebody else is taking care of it for them. And here's my proof. So you're free. I'm going to just stop you here because I'm again, I'm a visual learner. So for the people who are visual, you have the seller. I'm going to get on camera. You have the seller. So I'm a seller. Mm -hmm. You have the buyer. And there's another person we can't see. There's a third party who is our um, servicing company. So Mm -hmm. She is not paying me directly for my mortgage. She's going to pay this fictitious person. We can't see that the servicing company. There's a few of them. They are going to pay my bank and pay my mortgage just so you guys know. So she does not pay me directly. Also, I mean, but if you have a set it up, if you have it set up as paying the mortgage and then paying me some equity, it could be she pays everything to the servicing company. They pay my bank over here, and then she gives me a hundred bucks a month. Yep. So it in all fact, goes you, now it's an income-producing scenario, which you can help explain and put them in a better position to mm -hmm. qualify. I think what I find easiest under these circumstances is to actually find a lender in our sub two community. 
um, even going to like create a finance with Pace Morby, the free group page and finding a lender who is familiar with sub two and then therefore can uh, help those types of sellers who are well qualified. They just need some assistance with what we call the DTI, the debt to income ratio, which is the part that impacts them the most when you mm -hmm. buy a property subject to. Now you have to explain how that debt is, is technically being taken care of by another party, not the sellers themselves. Yeah. And then the first year, just extra info, bonus, right? We're nerds. I mm -hmm. think I explained this already. Um, only 75% of that debt gets removed. It has to go through a whole year before you could really get 100% taken off. So, okay. Okay. Wesley, can you Jonathan, you want to underwrite a potential wrap? All right, let's let's Ooh. do that. Um, uh, let's do DM, DM me, and uh, we can go through that. Yeah, guys, if you have properties or if you have motivated sellers, again, this is these are our Instagrams. There's Insta, uh, there's Insta, there's Ingrid, and there's mine on the other side. So make sure you're in uh, messaging us, and we'll get back to you. I'll check. We'll make. I quote tonight. I will go through all of my DMs and respond to everybody. So we'll check on. I'll that. hold her to that. There you go. Okay. I do want to touch on this before we scroll up. Okay. If I send a letter of intent. We have available to the one we just showed you. Okay. It may not necessarily be accepted. I mean, it, it very, I mean, no, nobody's saying it's going to be accepted. You're saying this is my letter of intent. Yeah. Guys, you can submit an offer. The truth, like if you want to go through and do an entire contract, yeah, you can submit an offer. It's like the difference between asking somebody out and actually putting a ring on it. You know what I'm saying? Like you're asking someone out with your intention saying, mm -hmm. Hey, I intend to go buy you dinner. But when you put a ring on it, a contract, you're it, you, that's even stronger in time. You're, you're ready to make this permanent. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that helps metaphorically explain. All right. I saw this one earlier and I want to just touch on it quickly. I want to make sure we have 13 minutes. So I know we have quite a few comments. So I found a few foreclosures today in my buy area, West Virginia, Mountain Mama. I know my next, my next step is to call them. My question is how would you open up the conversation? So again, leave with value. I do not like going into people, especially if I know like, like, they are in a pre foreclosure situation in some states. You can't even open up with high you're in like pre foreclosure. Like, so don't, I would not approach that rapport is the biggest thing that you can do. Go in and try and be kind. Hey, um, Ingrid, I'm reaching out to you today. I think there might be an issue with your bank. I was just wondering if anybody has uh, contacted you about ways to stop. It looks like they've started a pre foreclosure process. I bet a lot of people are just calling and they're saying, hi, Ingrid, you look broke. Can I buy your house? Okay. That's I'm being facetious, but you know, go in and add value. Um, remember when you're hitting a pre foreclosure list or you're hitting a really popular list, people talk about, I'm talking about here. So I want to give you guys the heads up. Everybody might be hitting that list. They're going to be getting a lot of phone calls. I'm going to tell you this much. Um, when you're overwhelmed, you're probably going to ignore your phone. Yeah. So door knocking might be the best way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, door knock with friends, uh, make sure that you're safe, but I would just go in leaving with value. Hi, I'm and leave a sticky note. Yeah. Hi, I'm just here to see if anybody's offered you a way to keep your home. If that's what you want to do. Yeah. Or save your credit or whatever that may be. Jose asked, how can we get a copy of the contract? I already, um, answered, I already answered that one earlier. Did you? Yeah, that's why I went back to your. Oh, okay. The LOI. Okay. Our, yes. Mine's the LOI. Mine's not the contract. Yeah. So um, I created my LOI. I wrote it up. Um, it was a mixture of different ones. And then um, the only person I know who I would trust their contract would be Pace. So he gives his Pace contract out under his Instagram. I definitely don't want to take credit for that. Um, and so that's where I would recommend if you need a contract. Tanisha, so I have mine over here. Tanisha said, I got a ring. Okay. And then Jonathan <laughs> just said, how do I DM you? Ingrid, guys, these are our Instagram handles right here. So you can see them. Ingrid with a Y. Okay. Ingrid with a Y. Yeah, make sure you're spelling it that way. So um, go to our Instagram. Let's share that one more time. Just that's so a sign language see. for Y. Yeah. <laughs> Let's share this just so you guys can see. So what you'll need to do is first you need to follow and then you come over here and hit message. Okay. Same thing for mine. So mine is the Caroline, if I can type on here, Caroline Kane. It's like a candy cane. No, I'm just kidding. It's, it's, it's not similar. Like a candy cane. Did I spell it right? Yeah. Let's see if it'll pull up at, maybe I have to do at. I don't even know if it's logged in. So let's see. Maybe it's not logged in. Yeah, it's not logged in. Oh, well, anyways, you get the idea. That's my Instagram. You do the same thing. <laughs> um, so that, oh, I need to stop the screen share. Um, that is what you do. All right, let's keep it going. I just, oh, what's that? Well, she asked kind of the same oh. thing. So Carly said similar. Um, best practice to tiptoe around foreclosure contact laws. Is it cross-referencing other lists? So I know, I know for sure Baltimore, you cannot bring up foreclosure. I think California, 
you might not be able to bring up somebody's in foreclosure. Stop um, casually the dog. I like that one. I do too. So you can bring them up there and have a conversation about what you want to do. I mean, sometimes just being direct. Hey, uh, I am just seeing if anybody would like to sell their house in the area. And I'm a local just... investor. I buy properties and I help people. Well, you can speak in generalities. Like mm -hmm. I help people get out of tough financial situations. Yeah. So figure out what works for you. Do some test um, test options and push mm -hmm. through that. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see. If you have I swear I have ADHD too. Hey, you're really, you're doing better than me, uh, I think. I don't know. Uh, okay, here you go. I'd love for one of you to close for me. I'd be happy to JV with you. Uh, just got my first deal done, but not in a hurry. Want a quality deal. Love that, Victor. So Victor, let us, I mean, we're main, our main market is Phoenix. That's where we are. But if you're in an area that has like a Kegley franchise and we can move it, we will absolutely help you. Mm -hmm. So let me be clear on something. Cause I've had some people send me some stuff. They're like, Oh, can you help me close this? But then when I call, it's like the second call on average, most calls take about 10 to 13 follow-ups mm -hmm. before they're ready to be closed. One more time. How many follow-ups? About 10 to 13. Okay. And lately because the market's been tough, it's a little bit more than that. So I uh, don't expect me to be like, Hey Ingrid, um, I got this seller. Will you call them right now? And it's like, the first or second call. Like, hey, Ingrid, can I take you out to coffee? And then you talk to my son. <laughs> I get the same thing. People mess it. Can I have five minutes? It's never five minutes. So no. this is, if you want to send us deals, and I, we actually talk about making this little spreadsheet for you guys. First and foremost, tell us why they need to sell. Mm -hmm. Why do they need to sell? Not why do they want to sell? Yeah. What do they need to sell? Well, they need to sell because if they don't sell, mm -hmm. they're losing it to an auction. They need to sell because... Um, these tenants are not paying and they're behind. They can't afford it anymore. Mm -hmm. They need to sell because they're moving across country and they can't manage to a mortgage payment and, a, and the cost of an apartment. Mm -hmm. Give us that. Mm -hmm. Give us their timeline. Uh, they need to sell before the end of the month. They need to sell in 60 days or less. They want to sell next year. Not highly motivated. That's going to be when you're going to kick to the curb. Um, if you could give us the basics and the condition, it needs a little bit of work. It needs a full gut. It needs whatever it may be. And then, the purchase price that they want to be at. Yeah. Give us those. But the main thing is why do they need to sell and their timeline? That is absolutely critical. Um, the other two are really nice to have. Yep. Yeah. Totally. All right. What else we got? Here? Um, okay. Janelle has needs to what? Needs to connect with a, a buyer to needs to connect buyer to property immediately. Finance approved. Unable to find good off market in the area. She is specific areas. Oh. It is an FHA loan. This will be my first deal. In Arizona? Cause I can, I can help. Yeah. So is it somebody who just needs to buy a, somebody like a, needs to buy a house immediately? Yeah. So Let's go. <laughs> hey, here you go. It's your, your agent with real. So she'll help yeah, you yeah. a ton. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. Carolina was on here. I was talking about this guy. So again, going back, we're going back in time, but guys, every single opportunity, I always go cash first. Now, if I see a house is in at that million dollar home, that's in pristine condition. I'm not going to go for cash. Okay. It doesn't need work. I would so, 80% of the time go cash. Yeah, that's better. But if you're niche and strategic enough, sometimes you know cash doesn't work. So for example, that million dollar one, I knew for a fact cash wasn't going to work. Um, when I go look for really old listings and I could, because I have, because uh, I'm an agent and I can see a little bit more about the mortgage details, I'm like, cash is not going to work. Mm -hmm. I don't like to waste my time. I don't like to waste agent time. You don't want to lose your rapport. I, no, like, hey, I, I'm like so direct, but in a friendly way. You're really good. I'm like, Hey, Caroline, it's Ingrid. I have my license. You love me. Like, I know your listing's been around for a while, girl. I've been there. I've oh been gosh. there. Let me send you an offer that actually makes sense. And if you don't like it, totally cool. You know, I, <laughs> I was going to make it really inappropriate. <laughs> I'll be the plan B. You guys know where plan <laughs> B goes. I'll be your plan B. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you can't always be the hot girl. Now, you always bring hot girl confidence to your offers. But understand your offer isn't always hot girl. Makes okay. sense. All right. Good point. So that's my little phrase, guys. Cash, cash, cash. Go for terms last. Thank you for sharing that. Um, okay. How do you, uh, okay. How do you approach distressed homeowners? The same way you would anybody else. Yeah. Oh, no, not that way. <laughs> Your house looks busted. No. Let me buy it. Don't do that. <laughs> guys, I'm telling you, I cannot give enough emphasis on this French word. Rapport. I need to give that sound a little Spanish. Rapport. Go rapport. rapport. <laughs> Be kind to somebody. Like yeah. people, especially if their house is in distress or especially if they're in foreclosure, how good do you think they feel about themselves? Mm -hmm. They can't afford to fix their roof. Yeah. They can't afford to pay their bills. Yeah. If they can't afford to pay their mortgage. Do you think they have enough money to get the food that they need for their family? Like mm -hmm. be kind. Yeah. 
Don't be a jerk. Lead with kindness. Mm -hmm. And honestly, everyone's going to have their own flavor of how they connect with people. And you'll the only way for you to figure that out is to get on the phone and talk to people. You know, I, I love Brent Daniels TTP because at the end of the day, how do you approach people? Well, how do you approach people when you're walking on the sidewalk? How mm -hmm. do you approach people when you're at the grocery store and you need them to move so that you can put your aisle through? How do you approach people when you're, you know, at the line at the, you know, fast food? Like you just read your social cues and you speak to people. Like that's how you approach them. Yeah. That'd be the biggest thing. And not everybody's going to be warm and fuzzy. No. You've got to be able to like a great book to read. How to win friends and influence people. Okay. So I read that and I listened. No, excuse me. I listened to it. Mm-hmm. Like in one ear, out the other, because that damn thing is pretty thick. It is. And I feel like the best teacher for this, so maybe I have a contrarian perspective, it's just go and talk to people. Absolutely. They're not going to rob you from your birthday. Like they're not, you know, like, oh, well, um, call people, experiment, see how you, how you come across. Maybe you really suck at talking to people. Could if be. you do, you're going to need the most practice, homie. So like... It, that's that's the reality like this isn't you know thank you for participating trophy hour you're gonna have to go and talk to people and see how good you can navigate those those little nuances that happen in conversations so i bring it up because actually brent daniel shared this the other day so oh. i'm gonna go i'm gonna read it off for you now <laughs> oh good that he has the the, the, the condensed the, version so i'll go through the condensed version my, my kind of guy give we me the highlights four minutes here so one don't criticize, condemn, or complain. Instead, okay. try to understand the other person's perspective and offer constructive feedback. First, love, seek to understand. I love constructive feedback. Mm -hmm. Two, give honest and sincere appreciation. People will be more receptive to your ideas if they feel appreciated. Okay. Uh, three, arouse in the other person an eager want. Help others see the benefit of your ideas and how they can be achieved. Four, become genuinely interested in other people. Show an interest in their lives and their experiences. Five, smile. A smile is a universal welcome and can help put others at ease. You can even, like, sometimes people are just dialing. Stand, body language is a lot of it. You can just smile on your top. Like, your voice changes when you're smiling, so smile. Mm -hmm. Six, remember that a person's name is, to that person, the sweetest and most important sound in any language, Ingrid. Mm -hmm. Use people's names when you talk to them. Ingrid, don't you love it when somebody addresses you by your name with the with oh, the Oh, sweet Caroline, totally. <laughs> um, be a good listener. Encourage others to talk about themselves and their ideas. Actually, I want to go back to the name thing. Life hacks so I can remember people's names. As soon as somebody tells me their name, I try and like find a way to make it rhyme or what I can associate it to. And I use, especially when I'm first meeting somebody, I try and use their name a lot in a sentence so I retain it. So mm. put a life hack. Um, again, I'll read seven again. Be a good listener. Encourage others to talk about themselves and their ideas. Active listening. Repeat what they're saying in your head. Eight, talk in terms of the other person's interest. This helps to build rapport and make the conversation more enjoyable for the other person. Nine, make the other person feel important and do it sincerely. Recognize and acknowledge the contributions and values of others. Boom. Now you don't have to read the book. That's yeah. all I want. <laughs> Give me the cliff notes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, and then the other thing I want to go ahead and do something. Oh, I was going to say, speaking of which, uh, there's different personality types. So, like, why did I talk about highlights and just give it to me quickly? Because I also know I'm a high, I'm a higher D. I, my, uh, there's, a, there's a disc assessment out there. So there's D drivers, directors, people like that. Mm -hmm. And then there's I, which is influencers, motivators. My I is slightly higher than my D, but I'm still really high on the D. Okay. And so because of that, if you're just talking in circles, I get impatient. Yeah. Um, so, me too. so when you, when you see me exhibit a lot of patience, you recognize that that actually takes a lot of energy for me to be like same but listening. that's also like that's why I, if if you ever send me a voice message i don't listen to it i'm never <laughs> listening to it so people send me those on instagram and facebook i never listen to it yeah. don't send me a voice message yeah and that's why people are like can i go take you to coffee can i have a five minute phone call no send me the condensed version of what you need help with and i'll give you a better response so yeah. same yeah appreciate that um one thing i did want to say guys let's see it's under me Make sure you're liking right over here. You can like this. And then over here, if you're on Ingrid's and you're on mine, you should be able to subscribe. So please give Ingrid some followers on YouTube. 
give us some likes and give us some feedback in the comments. Um, all right, let's continue through these questions. We have actually, we're at five o'clock. So let's see if we can find another one. <gasps> Sal was on here. Do you know Sal? Sal Barrera. Oh, he's incredible. That, I like him. That's a very uh, famous name in the sub two community. It is. He's a great guy. He's in New Jersey. Do you know, knock, do you door knock pre foreclosure properties? Yes. I have, but I don't want to. Yeah, no, it's a little, it's intimidating, <laughs> but I, yes, we have. But you can't also do Well, I'm them. about efficiency. Remember, I'm a high D. So, like, will I get more no's on the phone? Yes. But will I get through more? Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Where do you want to be? Um, uh, I think you kind of answered this one earlier. I'm not going to click on that one. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yes, it would be bad form, Stevie D. Let's talk on the phone and let's go through that. Yeah, I'm not going to highlight that. I don't think you see it everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, okay. How do you comp a seller finance deal that needs rehab of fifty two hundred thousand dollars the most important thing in creative finance ingrid is cash flow cash flow i know that because we were talking one day and i was being add and wasn't paying attention and i was like the terms you're like cash flow ground i was like absolutely i knew that mm -hmm. we, were, we were going over your financing so cash flow guys cash flow cash flow cash flow so what you need an rei calculator to figure out the cash flow go to my link tree and Boom. my instagram and you're gonna get it so. i thought i could share that i will yeah. it's on her link tree i'm not gonna do that so we're questions so i have to pee Oh, okay. Well, then go pee, and I, I we can uh, wrap this up here. We have already gone through a bunch. Okay. So, I, as you can tell, I'm very direct. Mm -hmm. I'm doing 75 hard, and because of it, I'm drinking a lot of water, a lot of uh, one gallon a day. And because of that, I honestly have a hard time being in one place for more than 45 minutes. So, we've been here for an hour. We have an hour, an hour and one minute. <laughs> So, Ingrid, thank you for doing this. I'm excited. We're going to be doing this every Wednesday from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock Arizona time. Mm -hmm. If you guys did get any value, please let us know. Um, follow Ingrid. Follow myself on and, Instagram. And message. send us topics. Like, yes. what do you want us to cover? And we'll try to get more deeper on more singular topics. This was really more about an introduction so that if you've not really been on one of these with me and Caroline or you want to better understand what, what are we doing here, you know, bring your questions. Uh, we're Again, we're going to highlight some people through StreamYard. So you might even come up here with us. Um, we just want to make sure we're bringing you value. I love that. I don't see it over here, but just so you know, you said that property is having a hard time getting a hold of the agent. The property is in Gilbert. So Stephen, absolutely re cool. reach out to us. We love Gilbert. Um, I do want to highlight this just for the YouTube video. And I'm going to let you go because I need to go pee because I just talked about it. It's right here. Why do they need to sell? What is their timeline, basic condition, and what is the purchase price? All right, guys, thank you for tuning in. If you message us on Instagram, we will re respond to you tonight. I promise.